Hello everyone and welcome to Bloodline, the taxonomy of fear where we examine what, if anything, makes a movie scary. Yes, and this week we have a very special opportunity to examine the scope of the mega franchise. Mm -hmm. These don't come along very often and not really ever. I mean, not besides spinoff, enough. since the mid-70s, early 80s, when they started coming out, when the four horsemen of hell were born, your Freddy, your Jason, your Michael, and what I'm going to say is the most venerable of all four, Leatherface. Who is back in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D, yeah. which is doing surprisingly well in the box office. And so this is going to give us an opportunity to look at that movie in the context of the six previous movies. And we're going to use the frame, you know you're watching a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie when... Surprise, it begins with a road trip, hopefully in a van. And a van is important because you can fit more victims mm -hmm. in a van. Excellent. And you're taking a road trip through Texas, which could be an isolated place, which is necessary for a lot of horror movies. Yes. And number five, exit through a window. <laughs> in the first movie, it is crucial to our protagonist when she bolts the home, going through a plate glass mm. window to get away. It's a huge turning point in the movie. Yes. It sort of appears throughout the other movies in the franchise as well, but not so in Texas Chainsaw 3D. Mm -hmm. All right, trope number four in the Texas Chainsaw movies a mask made out of a human face. Yeah. Leatherface might be a butcher by profession, but he's, he likes to sew as a hobby. Bit of an atelier uh, Yes, he likes, to, he likes to make masks stitched together from the faces of his victims. Mm -hmm. And this is because he's horribly disfigured. Yep. And so he takes the skin of the faces of his victims and stitches together a mask for himself. And in this movie, he not only stitches together a mask for himself, he actually sews it to his own face. Next level. Which was awesome. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was a it really... It worked well in 3D. <laughs> Stitching that And next on the list is the sliding metal door. This is another one of those moments that doesn't come up in all the Texas Chainsaw movies, but is so iconic from the first one. Boom. And is given a nice nod in Texas Chainsaw 3D that it, it really sort of is a metaphor for like the entire sense of hope and happiness that you can expect to let go the moment it shuts When that door you. closes, it is over. Yeah, life's gone. Number two on the list is the interminably long family dinner. This mm -hmm. is where we really get a good peek Way into the home life of Leatherface and his twisted redneck cohort, but it always drags on far yeah. too long. And I was glad to see that in Texas Chainsaw 3D, they did not reincorporate the family dinner, but did give a nice little sort nod. of yeah. Easter egg with a breaking bread moment mm -hmm. at one point in the film. And finally, number one indicator that it is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie is the chainsaw dance. The first one ends with Leatherface wielding his chainsaw and in the background the sun's coming up yeah. and he's in silhouette and it is a crazy scary scene and it seals him in the canon of horror movie villains, yeah. which should not ever be replicated in the following <laughs> movies. They try, but they don't really succeed. Yeah, there's some there's some wild wielding about, but never really mm -hmm. the orchestral finale that you yes, have at the exactly. end of the movie. And in this one, in 3D, it. there's a scene where he throws the, the saw at the camera and yeah. he actually ducked, which was kind of embarrassing, we hate to admit it, but we did. <laughs> yeah. But I'm kind of glad they dispensed with that in the new one. Me too. Does Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D fit the bill of being a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? Three out of the six is not, not, that, not that good, but I think it actually in the end might be a good thing because it indicates a, a new direction that the franchise is going to go into. Yeah, it gives a nice little retouching on the origin story mm -hmm. and then sort of refreshes our relationship with Leatherface to send us off into the one, possibly six sequels that mm -hmm. Lionsgate has the option to exercise And a on whole new batch of cliches. Absolutely. Jordan, what's yours? I'm going to go with the sort of weird stepchild that's like the side universe of the Texas Chainsaw franchise, which is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Mm -hmm. And it stars a incredibly young Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. And the inspiration for the killings that the family does is a little bit different from the other movies in the franchise. But I think it's weird enough to see, even though I think it's probably the worst of all seven. Interesting choice. Yeah. I'm going to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the origin story of Leatherface and this family, because it provides provides a nice arc mm -hmm. for the recent movie, which actually goes into making him a somewhat sympathetic character. My God, they'll remember what we did. Yeah! So that's it for this episode of Bloodline. Email us at bloodline at wired.com. Let us know what you think. We'd like to hear from you. Yes. And as we like to say here at Bloodline, remember, it's just, just a movie. A movie.